bungee are everywhere. The nice thing about cultivating mushrooms is that we can choose our preferred bungee so that we can do more foraging instead of buying. There are an estimated 2 million species of fungi. Medicinally, a lot of the mushrooms in this category fall into the medicinal category. Generally speaking, these are the major parts of the mushroom. There's the cap. Sometimes there's scales on, on the top. So sometimes the spores are released through gills. A classic underside mushroom look that, had, that looks like gills. And sometimes they are released from a sp spongy packet. Sometimes they have rings around them. And sometimes they have stems, sometimes they don't. What's an example of a mushroom that doesn't have stem? Puffballs. Puffballs. If you dig down for, far enough into the soil, they do have a small stem. Turkey. Turkey tails. Oh, yeah. yeah. Turkey tails don't, uh, are one of those mushrooms that emerge from the logs nice. and, and other pieces of wood. The wood ear. Wood, the wood ear. Wood ear. Wood ear is another example of that. My ceiling can be thought of as the root system of fungi. It's not really roots, it's more of a neural network and also <coughs> externalized stomach. In an ideal setting, the mushroom life cycle can take place in as little as two weeks from the release of spores to the fruiting of the mushroom body in an ideal condition. Mushroom spores are so dense they can live in outer space. It begs the question, <laughs> are mushrooms aliens? <laughs> They're hurled out of the mushroom itself at an incredible force. What's the force of a NASA space shuttle launching into space? 1G. 1G. It has to overcome one gravitational unit. That, this reason, this, uh, this 10G force that the spores are curled, curdled out through, is the reason we have mushroom spores floating around the Sahara Desert from Hawaii, and mushroom spores from the Sahara Desert in Europe. They're, they're, they're globe trotters, these, these fungi. And like some of you recollected, it's, it's very entertaining to see mushrooms <coughs> sporulate. Sometimes certain mushrooms can re release as many as a million spores in a single day. They're very, very lightweight also. And very nutritional. I learned yesterday that, that they're very nutritious. Mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're, even though they're very small, certain medicinal mushrooms like reishi have very potent qual uh, properties to them. The mushroom spores are actually released from these <coughs> living rocket ships called Basidia. They are releasing 24-7 at the point at which the mushrooms are wanting to reproduce. In order to reproduce, though, they need to come up into contact with a compatible spore. Luckily, they are very flexible in, in expressing their sexuality. They can, they can switch between 18 different genders. Once they find that compatible mate, they start forming a basic mycelial thread, and that's the, the hyphae. All the mushrooms we're going to be working with today consume lignin and cellulose. Lignin is the hardening agent in wood, and cellulose gives plants their structure. Then as they start consuming that lignin and cellulose, they ex extend out their thread-like material until they are ready to reproduce. At a certain point, they've consumed enough material that they re recognize it's time to send off some new, new offspring. And that's when they form this hyphal knot, which is the first stage in popping out a mushroom. The primordia which follows that is, you often see that as a little bump. You know, in the, in the mushroom 
kids will give you with the, the straw, you'll be first seeing the primordia emerge from the side of the plastic bag. And I think I have a picture of it in here too. A few days and sometimes even a few hours later, the primordia turns into what more closely resembles a mushroom that can then re release spores shortly thereafter. What are some fun, functional functions of fungi? All of the organic matter we have all around us, which is especially important in the tropics. Things are constantly growing here. <clears throat> and by decomposing that organic material, they're improving the health of the soil. Because fungi reduce all that organic material down to their basic constituent parts. Plants are able to absorb more nutrients when they have connections, like Joseph was talking about, between my mycelial mats that are mainly in the mycorrhizal category, which is the, the type of fungi that, that associates with roots. In some large reforestation efforts globally, there were massive die-offs of trees because they didn't pair the proper fungus with the proper root system. And they can improve our health too. There's been a, a millennia old, multi-millennia multi old tradition, tradition of pairing with fungi for improving our health. Some of the categories <coughs> of mushrooms include the sacrifice. These are the decomposers. These guys consume organic matter that's already dead like straw and coffee grounds and logs. Some mushrooms, like we were saying, actually attack living organisms. It doesn't produce mushrooms though, it just attacks the tree. Reishi actually can, can jump between the saprophytic category and the parasitic category, which is why we can't import reishi mushrooms into the island, because they attack Ohia. The same is also true of maitake. We can't import maitake because it attacks Sophia. Then there's the mycorrhizal fungi, which are the ones that I mentioned live underneath the soil and associate with different root systems. <coughs> Between probably upwards of 90% of all plants have this fungal plant partnership going on. There's also a type of fungi that is inherent in the plant itself. If there have been studies that have shown that fungi, that more than half of plant cells aren't plant cells at all. They're fungal cells. It begs, it begs the question of where does a plant begin and where does a fungus begin or end? So those are the endophytic mushrooms. So this is what the my, my ceiling looks like. This is a picture I took of a pile of wood chips in a uh, in a wheelbarrow. There's an even more impressive picture that I didn't include in this slideshow of a big chunk of, of wood chips being entirely supported by a single thin strand strand of mycelium. This stuff's <laughs> impressive. It's only one cell wall thick. We are multicellular beings. They're single cell beings. And they can support, arguably, as much as 30,000 times their own weight. They're also incredible at um, consuming different food sources. Mm -hmm.